Special thanks to Patreon supporter Z Pro Warfare for making this tour possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scare Tool here bringing you another Minecraft Modern Warfare aircraft tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building the General Dynamics F-16C Fighting Falcon. The F-16 Fighting Falcon is a single engine multi-role fighter aircraft originally developed by General Dynamics for the United States Air Force. Designed as an air superiority day fighter, it evolved into a successful all-weather multi-role aircraft. Over 4,600 aircraft have been built since production was approved in 1976. Although no longer being purchased by the U.S. Air Force, improved versions are being built for export customers. In 1993, General Dynamics sold its aircraft manufacturing business to Lockheed Corporation, which in turn became part of Lockheed Martin after a 1995 merger with Martin uh, Mierda. The Fighting Falcon's key features include a frameless bubble canopy for better visibility, side-mounted control stick to ease control while maneuvering, an injection seat reclined 30 degrees from vertical to reduce the effective g-forces of the pilot, and the first use of a relaxed static stability fly-by-wire flight control system that helps to make it an agile aircraft. The F-16 has an internal M61 Vulcan cannon and 11 locations for mounting weapons and other mission equipment. The F-16 of F-16's official name is Fighting Falcon, but Viper is commonly used by pilots and its crews due to a perceived resemblance to a Viper snake, as well as the Colonial Viper Starfighter at Battlestar Galactica, which aired at the same time the F-16 entered service. In addition to active duty in the United States Air Force, Air Res Force Reserve Command, and the Air National Guard units, the aircraft is also used by the U.S. Air Force, uh, Thunderbirds Aero Demonstration Team, and an adversary slash aggressor aircraft by the United States Navy. The F-16 has also been procured to serve in the Air Forces of 25 other nations. As of 2015, it has the world's most numerous fixed-wing aircraft in service. So um, yeah, really cool aircraft here, the F-16, obviously a very iconic um, aircraft. It's seen a lot of widespread service, um, participating in a lot of the modern conflicts, um, especially in the Middle East, and is also used by a lot of various countries um, that are kind of NATO allies. So pretty cool aircraft overall and um, fun history um, for it, and I feel like one of those aircraft that's really just going to be famous for quite a long time as I don't see it really going anywhere really anytime soon. Uh, but yeah, really cool aircraft uh, and should be a fun build to finally come back and revisit this aircraft after the old version which is extremely outdated and have built a very long time ago. This new model here just absolutely is fantastic and just overall a super nice design. Uh, from my knowledge, I believe the F-16C is kind of the um, most modern uh, version that's currently in service. I've seen there's probably a, a few different um, other variants and stuff like that, but I think the F-16C is the one kind of mainly in service with the United States Air Force. Uh, overall, really cool aircraft. It should be a fun build. Before we go and dive in and take a look at it, I do want to go and give a special thanks to Patreon supporter Z Pro Warfare for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel more than you already do, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions where you can go ahead and pledge a small amount to the channel every month. And in doing so, earn a few core request you're choosing. It really helps to work the work I do with my channel and is really greatly appreciated. So I definitely recommend checking that out if you are interested in taking part in some of those benefits. Uh, but with that though, let's go ahead and dive in here to take a look at the um, F-16C Fighting Falcon. So going ahead and uh, jumping into it, we have the two-tone kind of gray color scheme. So we have the lighter gray and the darker gray, which seems to be the common color scheme that's really located on um, the Fighting Falcons as of right now. We have the nose of the aircraft up here. Um, kind of a tricky nose to build. It's very slim and it's got a little bit of kind of interesting shaping going on for it, but I'm overall pretty happy with the design for it. I think it came out pretty good. Um, obviously, just in case you can tell, we do have an in-flight and landed version available in this tutorial as well, so you have both those at your disposal here for building this thing. Uh, but we're going to wave it toward the back. We have the cockpit as well as, again, the wings uh, with the pylons here. We have a very simple loadout, um, just some uh, external fuel tanks and basically two um, air-to-air -air missiles located on the sides there. Pretty uh, simple kind of loadout, uh, nothing too crazy. And then as we progress further back, we have the vertical stabilizer, horizontal stabilizers, and the engine right here. Um, but yeah, overall pretty cool aircraft. Um, definitely a fun one to uh, to make and to uh, hopefully and release as a tutorial because I know a lot of you guys will definitely have a lot of great use for the F-16, especially with all the countries that use it and uh, just the, you know, iconicness of the F-16. So without further ado, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer. Layer number one. All right, guys. So going ahead and moving into our tutorial, we're actually going to be starting off with layers one and two. Felt it was a good uh, kind of point to start with both these layers, as it's uh, 
pretty simple what layer one is. So again, we're starting with layers one and two. If you're gonna make, if you're completely new to my aircraft tutorials, the way I like to structure these tutorials, I like to do half on camera, half off. What this means is I like to basically build the center line and then the entire right side of the aircraft. This uh, F-16 here is symmetrical on both sides, so whatever we do on one side will be the same on the other side. What this means is we're gonna build the center line. We're gonna build the right side on camera, and it'll be up to you guys to copy the right side over to the left side. Uh, in between layers. Pretty simple stuff, nothing too really complex, and once we kind of get for the first few layers, you'll make a little bit more sense what we're doing. And um, all that. Also, in addition, if you do want to build the landing gear, we will be adding the landing gear on at the end as a add-on to this aircraft. So what that means for you guys is that if you want to build it landed, you do want to make sure that layer one here is going to be one and two blocks basically off the ground. So you can see here, we have basically layer one here is mainly these iron trap doors for our fuselage. We do have those top slabs there, which are part of our drop tanks, but counting the iron trap doors here, it's coming off the side of this second um, block up from the ground level. And that's where you want to position uh, layer one here uh, for the aircraft if you do want to have it landed. Obviously, if you're building this in flight, doesn't really matter. You can build this um, however how you want, as long as you're within the block limits. Anyways, um, basically this uh, first layer here, it's gonna be a row of five of iron trap doors like so and we want to go then go to the second and third one from the front we're going to place down two iron trap doors out to the side now going to the top here of this uh, iron trap door here we're going to place down a end rod on the very front one followed by a black concrete block and then a row of stone blocks which in total is going to be eight blocks back at this point right here depending on what game version you're on if you're on java we're going to go ahead and place down a row of four of pistons and we're going to go ahead and place them down like so um, so we're going to place down a row of four blocks across the top here and we'll place the pistons below here like so. If you're on Pocket Edition or Bedrock, I would recommend building two stone blocks and then two stone top slabs. As the pistons here will be using a uh, little feature that is on Java and Java only to kind of make these pistons create a little bit of better flow for the fuselage. So just keep that in mind um, for what version you're on. Anyways, after that section is done, we're going to then place down a total of four stone top slabs and then a... Um, and or an iron trap door on the end there. After that, going back up to the front, we're gonna place down a stone stair like this, coming off this end rod like so, a black concrete block, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, or actually, sorry, my bad. Went a little too far back. Um, it's gonna be a total of only three or two stone blocks from back from that black concrete block. We then want to take our stone stairs. We're gonna place down a row of four stone stairs. So one, two, three, four. And then grab ourselves stone top slabs. We're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, and s yeah, five stone top slabs back from that. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down a light gray stainless pane, then two andesite walls, and another light gray stainless pane, like so. At this point, if you're on Java, I would recommend building the right side over to the left side because right now we're going to be going ahead and doing a glitch or a technique here to go ahead and um, alter these pistons. And if you update a block next to these pistons, it will cause the pistons to basically um, go back to this state right here. So uh, basically, uh, using the command slash give at p, we're gonna go type in Minecraft colon, and then we'll type in debug, and it should pop up. You want debug underscore skip to stick. You're gonna press tab, and it should autofill. Press enter, and with that, we get this stick right here. Now this stick, we're gonna go ahead and basically. Um, right click the pistons and what it's going to do here is it's going to create a piston that looks like that it creates a little bit better flow there for the aircraft and a better sloping for that bottom section again just for example if you place a block next to it or break a block next to it it will cause the pistons to revert back so you will need to uh, re uh, alter them again so just throwing that out there um, for all you wondering now at this point up here on this black concrete block, we're going to go ahead and use a nether technique, placing down an iron trap door, and then using our debug stick, we can actually go ahead and close it. We can go select it open, and we can set this to true, and it will lay flat here against the surface of that black concrete. If you're on Bedrock or Java, or sorry, Bedrock or uh, Pocket Edition, you can go ahead and place down a birchwood trap door and have relatively the same effect. At this point, we're going to then go to this stone block here right after the iron trap door. We're going to build one, two, three blocks out to the side in this third block. We're going to go ahead and keep. Coming off that, we're going to go ahead and place down a skeleton skull. That's going to be the start of our drop tank here. And also, we're going to place down a tripwire hook on the side of this stone block here. We're going to go ahead and place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stone blocks back. So you have a total of nine here. And then we're going to go ahead and place down a smooth stone block here on the very end of that, followed by a ladder coming off that block like so. We're going to place down an iron trap door on both sides of this block here. Use our debug stick to close those. Like so. Again, you can use virtual trapdoors if you're on Java or Pocket Edition. 
After that, uh, we want to go and then uh, go back up to the front here. We're going to go ahead and go to our second block, place down our iron trap door here again to both sides, go on the bottom, and again use our debug stick here. We'll close those trap doors on the sides if we have access to the debug stick. We're going to go ahead and place down a row of one, two, three, four, five, and six. Like gray stainless paints, one, two, three, four, five, and six over here as well. And then just a stone slab coming off both sides of this stone block. Once we have uh, that all complete there, uh, we want to go ahead and then place down a quartz uh, top slab that will be coming off the side of this pane, and then one more out to the side here. So you have uh, basically uh, space between this glass pane here, the second one on the side, and this quartz top slab. We're going to place down a skeleton skull there, and then after that, we're going to go and then place down a birchwood fence post, or sorry, fence gate back. And also grabbing birchwood signs, we're going to place down a birchwood sign on both sides of this top slab, like so. We then want to place down an air quartz top slab back followed by two birchwood fence gates, a fence gate to the side of the slab opened up toward it, same thing over here, and then a narrow stone top slab with a narrow birchwood fence gate opened up to the sides here of this slab like so. On the very back we want to go ahead and grab ourselves an item frame. We're going to place down an item frame. In the item frame we want to place down a black concrete block and then a birchwood sign on the side of that top slab like so. If you are on Java, uh, this is a feature that's only going to be available on Java, <laughs> um, placing the sign over the item frame. If you're on Pocket Edition or Bedrock, just go ahead and place down the item frame and disregard the sign. Um, and then on the bottom here of our pylons here, uh, just to expand upon this, we do want to go ahead and take our stone slabs. Going back from this iron trap door, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, and six stone top slabs, and then a one iron trap door right there, so you have two on the end. And with that all complete, that is going to wrap up what we have there for layers uh, 1 and 2. And looking at it from up above, this is what we should have from the top down view with this layer complete. Anyways, that right there again is it for layer 2, or layers 1 and 2. And with that, let's move into layer number 3. Alright guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number 3. For layer 3 to go ahead and get started with, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to place down a stone block on top of this iron bar right here, or this end rod. We then want to place down a row 2 of... So I wrote three of pistons that are going to be upside down. And that's going to be, again, if you're on Java, um, so you'll have your three row three of pistons. If you are on um, basically bedrock or park condition, I'd recommend placing down three stone top slabs instead. Anyways, we're going to go then place down two stone full blocks after those blocks there. Then we're going to place down two more pistons, um, like so. Again, they'll be upside down like so. And again, an alternative for you guys if you're on a different version is to place down a place down stone upside down stair here facing this way or facing that toward the front and then a stone top side right there. Um, again, alternatives for bedrock and pocket edition. Anyways, at the end here, we're going to then place down a stone top side here and then an iron trap door. So you get something that looks like this. After that is all complete, we're going to go ahead and then uh, place down a black concrete block right here on top of this one. We're going to follow that back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 stone blocks back. A polished dance side block, a polished dance side upside down stair, and a polished dance side top side to round off the back. Once we get done with that, going back up to the front here, we're going to place down skeleton skulls on the sides of these two pistons here. We're going to go then also place down two stone upside down stairs so one and two upside down stairs and then we're going to then place down one two three stone top slabs and then at this point uh we're going to then place down two stone upside down stairs again so one two two in side walls and then one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen stone full blocks back and then a polished dance side upside down stair and then a skeleton skull on both sides of this polished dance side stair there in the middle now once we have that all done, we're not going to test these pistons just yet because we will be placing down blocks on top of them and in doing so uh, it will cause those um, pistons to freak out. Uh, same thing actually would happen back here, so just to mention that as well, those pistons will probably break out. Uh, I used World Edit to copy this layer over, so th that's the reason why these pistons didn't revert back. But uh, just take note of those, those pistons are very sensitive and they will uh, revert back. So just make sure that you uh, keep your debug stick on hand if you're placing them and be ready to, you know, obviously uh, fix them if need be. Anyways, at this point, we're going to then go to the sides here. We're going to go to this second stone top slab here. We're going to place down one, two, three, and four iron trap doors. After that, we're going to take our stone top slabs and we're going to place down a row of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 stone top slabs. Then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 iron trap doors back. We then want to place down 1, 2, 3, 4 iron trap doors like this and then one more toward the back there. And we're going to go ahead and place down another row of 4 of iron trap doors. 1, 2, 3, 4. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down a row of 3 of stone top slabs. 1, 2, 3. And then a row of 1 and 2 like that on the end there. 
Once you have that done, we're going to go and then place down a chain, come off these two stone top slabs, like down on both sides there. Once we have that all done, uh, we want to go and then place down a iron trap door on top of this block here, a stone slab, and a stone stair directly after that. We then want to place down one, two, three, four um, of these andesite walls back, and then we're also going to place down two iron trap doors on top of these two blocks here. After that, next to this uh, stone stair, or in between the stone top slab, we're going to place down an iron trap door. And we're going to then actually, easier easier just to go ahead and go to this stone tops up here. So the stone tops up here, we're going to place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 iron trap doors along the side there. At this point, we'll go ahead and then go to this stone stair here. We'll place an iron trap door to the side and then go back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 iron trap doors. Our next row here is going to have an indent from the front. And we're going to place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 this time. Next row here is going to be a iron trap door coming off the end here out to the side and then one two three uh and inside walls going forward so just double check yep it's gonna be three and then to the side here we're gonna place down four of our iron bars like that and also we want to place down a stone slab coming off this last inside wall like that going forward we then want to place down one two three iron trap doors and then one two to the side there just like that after we have that done, we're going to go ahead and then place down two birchwood fence gates, come off those um, iron trap doors there. We're going to place down a quartz top slab back, or smooth quartz, then a smooth quartz top slab forward, a birchwood fence gate, smooth quartz top slab, and then a skeleton skull. Go to the side of uh, this top slab here and place down a birchwood fence gate to both sides, as well as to the side of this top slab here. And then we want to go ahead and place down a birchwood sign on the side of this forward top slab like that. And then going to the back here, we're going to place down an item frame. So we'll grab an item frame. And there will be an item frame here on this top slab coming off of it, followed by a black concrete block in the item frame, and then a birchwood sign on the side of that top slab like that. And after that is all done there, that is going to pretty much wrap up what we have here for this layer. Just double checking to make sure we're not missing anything and everything does appear to be good to go. Looking at the top down view, this we should have with uh, layer 3 complete. And as you can see, you really kind of get a good outline for the um, overall appearance of the aircraft. Uh, but yeah, that is it for layer 3 and let's move on to layer number 4. Alright guys, so moving into our next layer, we have layer number 4. Layer 4, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down a daylight detector on the top here. We're going to turn this to the night mode and then place down an end rod coming off of it like that going toward the front there. We then want to place down a stone slab going back, fall by, or yeah, going back, fall by another piston. So we'll have a piston right here. We're going to then place down three stone full blocks back. Um, again, if you're on uh, Pocket Edition or Bedrock, I'd recommend putting a, putting a stone stair in this spot. Um, so yeah, stone stair right there can work. We then want to place down a, uh, after those three stone blocks there, we're going to go ahead and leave a space of either five blocks open for the cockpit if you do want to try to build an interior for yourself. Or if you'd rather close it in like I did here, I'm going to go ahead and just close off the cockpit so I don't have like, this weird void in the inside. I'm just going to put a row of five of black concrete down just to close the canopy off a little bit better. Um, again, kind of up to you guys whatever you want to do. Either a space of five or a row of five of black concrete. Anyways, after that row of five there, we're going to go ahead and then switch to gray concrete. And we're going to place down a row of gray concrete that's going to go all the way back to this point here total of 15 now at this point it depends on what you guys want to do if you have this aircraft flying obviously you probably want your engine on for this i went ahead and placed on a magma block and then a orange stained glass pane to create that kind of engine type effect if you are on or if you are building the landed version i'd recommend instead of placing down a magma block i would place down an air gray concrete block and then probably a black concrete block and i would put a stone button on the side of that block so basically looking at a uh, land version, this is what it looks like. So the engine's kind of turned off for whatever. Obviously, if you have this taxi, taxiing, or if you have it, uh, you know, starting up, you can keep the, have the landing gear and the engine like that. I'm not saying you have to have one or the other. Um, you can obviously change it up and do whatever you guys want, but just kind of want to throw that out there for those of you guys for a little bit more extra realism. At this point, we're going to then go back into the front. We're going to place down one, two, like racing us paints to the side, one off this piston, one off this stone block, and then the end of side wall. We're going to go ahead and then place down one, two, three, and four stone blocks back. After that, we're going to go ahead and then take our great concrete. We're going to go back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, and nineteen. Great concrete blocks back, a polished andesite block, a stone brick wall, and a light gray stained glass pane on the end there. After that's all done, uh, we want to go and then go back up to the front. We're going to place down a trip bar hook, which will be coming off the side of this stone block here. And one thing while I remember, I do want to go ahead and also go to the bottom of the nose here 
And on this stone block here, we're going to place it on a lever. And we're going to have this flicked backwards. Actually, we're going to go and turn it so it's faced backwards like so on the bottom there for a little bit of an instrument. And at this point, also, if you have the debug still on, or debug stick still on you and you are on Java and you want to play ahead and place these pistons, you can go ahead and just right click these pistons now and you can change them all to the extended to uh, true and uh, you can have those pistons all complete there and that's pretty much how it is right there. As you can see, the shaping on it is so much better. The pistons really do a good job at, um, you know, shaping um, the uh, nose here. Um, after that though, we're going to go then go to the sides here on top of this iron trap door. We're going to place down an iron trap door there. And then we're going to then place down two daylight detectors and make sure you turn them to the night mode. We want to then place down two polished black stone walls, followed by a... Or actually, sorry, my bad. It's going to be uh, different on the sides here. So this side actually... I need to, I need to actually adjust. Uh, but on the right side here, it's going to be a stone slab and then two polished black stone stairs. Over here on the left side, it's going to be two polished black stone walls and then the polished black stone stair. This right here is just basically meant to signify where the gun comes into play. So the gun is kind of located in this section here. So uh, we kind of have it uh, pop out a little bit. And actually, I'm going to kind of make a change on the fly here. Uh, we don't typically do these, but we're actually going to go and swap out this left side here. We're going to do a polished black stone slab and then a wither skeleton skull there. I think it looks a little bit better um, for what we're trying to accomplish. And again, if we're on Java, we can do an extra little feature, placing down an item frame on the inside there. And we can grab ourselves a gray stained glass pane and actually place down a gray stained glass pane in the section here um, to kind of help keep that gray color a little bit better. But yeah, I'm going to make that little change there. Uh, so that'll be over there on the left side and the right side. So just make sure you pay close attention to that. That's really the only difference we're going to encounter on this aircraft. Uh, after that, though, we're going to go ahead and place down a row of one, two, three, four, five, and six gray concrete blocks back. Then one, two, three, four, five, six stone blocks. Another gray concrete block. Uh, another piston, like so. And then we're going to go ahead and place down a polished black stone slab here and a daylight detector. Turn that to night mode. Again, if you're on um, Bedrock or Park Edition, I'd probably place a polished black stone stair like that instead. Uh, but on Java, we'll place down that piston. We're going to go ahead and place down a daylight detector here. Turn that to night mode. And we want to go ahead and then place down one and two polished black stone slabs. And then two daylight detectors again. Turn to night mode. We're going to go ahead and then switch to uh, dark oak trap doors. We're going to place down a row of four dark oak trap doors, then a row of two. And then grabbing our gray carpet, we're just going to place down gray carpet here on, this, on those uh, last three stone top slabs. At this point also, we'll go ahead and re-grab our debug stick here as I accidentally um, swapped it out. But we're going to then uh, right click this right here and we'll make that extended to true as well to uh, help slope that back there. With that done, moving into our wings uh, to begin with, we'll be going ahead and going to this section here, come off this stair or that wither skeleton skull, whichever you want to look at. We're going to place down two daylight detectors and turn those to night mode. Followed by a row of one, two, three, four, and five polished black stone slabs. A daylight detector again turned to night mode, and then two dark oak with trap doors. Next row here is going to be a daylight detector coming off this polished black stone slab, turned to night mode, then one, two, three, four um, slabs back, daylight detector turned to night mode, and then two dark oak with trap doors back after that. Once we have that done, we're going to then place down a narrow daylight detector right here, turn this to night mode, followed by one and two polished black stone slabs. Then we're going to place down two uh, daylight detectors, turn these to night mode, and then two dark oak with trap doors after that. Continuing on, we're going to then place down a row of one, two, three, four, five daylight detectors, turn to night mode. And we then want to go ahead and place down a dark oak with trap door on the end here. We then want to place down a row of one, two, three, and four daylight detectors, turn these all to night mode, and then a dark oak with trap door on the end there. We're going to then basically place down a row of three of daylight detectors, like so, turn those to night mode, dark oak with trap door, a row of two of daylight detectors, again turn those to night mode, and then a dark oak with trap door, and then one daylight detector like this, turn to night mode, and a dark oak with trap door like that to the end there. With that finished, we're going to go then to grab our redstone repeaters, we're going to place down two repeaters on the top of these two stone or quartz top slabs, we're going to then grab ourselves some chains, we're going to place down two chains here coming off these dark oak with trap doors. And then after that, we want to go and grab some skeleton skulls. We're going to place down a skeleton skull on the side of this repeater. And also a skeleton skull, like so. And uh, with that all complete there, that is going to basically wrap up what we have there for layer number four for the build. And uh, with that, you can really start to see the aircraft coming together. Um, so looking pretty good overall and all around. Anyways, though, that right there is going to conclude layer number four for the building. With that, let's move on to layer number five. All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we're moving into layer number five. For layer five, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down an iron trap door on top of this second stone block here. 
and we're going to go ahead and follow it up with a daylight detector turn to night mode. We then want to place down a row of five of black stained glass full blocks back from that daylight detector, then a row of gray concrete that's going to be a total of 17 blocks back, a polished andesite block, a polished andesite stair, and a polished andesite slab. After that, going back up to the front, we're going to continue to work our way back to the sides by placing down an iron trap door on both sides of this daylight detector, a black stained glass pane, a narrow brick wall, a stone stair like so, a stone uh, slab directly after that, and we then want to go ahead and place down a polished blackstone slab after that. We're going to go ahead and place down one, two, three gray concrete, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, and 15 polished blackstone stairs back, like so. Uh, so 14 in total. And then a polished andesite stair here. And then we're going to take a skeleton skull and we'll be placing on a skeleton skull on both sides of this uh, polished andesite stair, like so. With uh, that all done, we want to go then switch to gray carpet. We're going to go to our third gray concrete block here. And we're just going to place down gray carpet all the way along the side here, all the way back to this last stone block, like that, on the side of the uh, fuselage. And with that all complete there, that is going to basically wrap up what we have here for uh, layer number uh, 5 of the build. And uh, with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, layer number 6. Alright guys, moving into our next area of layer 6. For layer 6 to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down an air brick slab on top of the second black stained glass block. Followed by two black stained glass blocks back, a air brick slab, a air brick slab, um, or sorry, an air brick stair, an air brick slab, and then a daylight detector turned to night mode and two dark oak trap doors back. At this point, going to the sides here, we're going to place down a dark oak or a dark black stained glass pane come off the side of this block here, and then a light gray stained glass pane right next to it. We're also going to place down a wither skeleton skull come off the side of this black, uh, this narrow brick uh, stair, like so. And that right there will basically be it for uh, the sides there. Once that's done, go into the rear. We're going to uh, count back from this dark oak with trap door one, two, three, four. And on our fifth space, we're going to place down an iron trap door, followed by a second iron trap door, a daylight detector turned to night mode, a stone slab. A piston, which would be like this, then one, two, three, four, and five stone full blocks back, and then a stone top slab on the end here. Uh, we can go ahead and alter this uh, piston, turn it into a um, basically uh, that block like so using our debug stick, or you can place down a stone stair if you're on a different version. Either way, continue on. Uh, we want to go and then go to our middle three stone blocks. We're going to place down three iron trap doors. And we want to go ahead and then take our debug stick here, and we'll use this again. We can go ahead and close these trap doors like so. So go ahead and change them. Open false is what we want, and we'll go ahead and close them like that. Again, you can use birchwood trap doors if you're on a different version. Now at this point, we're going to then take our birchwood signs. We're going to place down birchwood signs on the side of the stone block here, and this top slab on the end. We're going to go ahead and also place an item frame on the very end of this top slab, a gray bend in the item frame facing upwards, and then a birchwood sign on the uh, side here of the slab as well if you are on Java. And with that all complete there, that's going to wrap up layer 6, and at this point we'll be going ahead and now moving into our final layers of the aircraft. Alright guys, moving into our final layers here, we have layers 7 through 10. For these layers to go ahead and get started with, we're going to go ahead and go to the tail of our aircraft here. We're going to place down a stone block on top of this second one here, followed by 1, 2, uh, and 3 back. So you have a total of 4 there, followed by a light gray stingless paint on the end. After that, we're going to then go up to the second block again. We're going to place down 1, 2, 3 stone blocks, and then an anisite wall. Going to begin, we're going to place down an air stone block here. This time, however, we're going to place down a orange glazed terracotta block with a virtual button on both sides. Now, what this is meant to represent is the Air Combat Command uh, Magcom logo, which basically is the uh, Magcom, which is a subdivision of basically the big air force um, that uh, is responsible for more kind of air combat type missions. And uh, the F-16 here being obviously a combat type aircraft what kind of falls into that type of category. So uh, we do have this kind of on the back here to represent that um, kind of logo with the shield and uh, basically, um, you know, air combat <laughs> command uh, logo. I don't know how it's really explain it, but that's what that's supposed to represent there on the back. Obviously, you can change this, do whatever you guys want with it, um, but uh, that is what this is supposed to basically represent. We're going to go ahead and also place down a stone block on top of this anisite wall here. At this point, continuing to go up, we're going to then place down two stone blocks on top of here. And then we're going to go ahead and place down a light gray stained glass pane on the back there. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves a redstone repeater. And we're going to place down a redstone repeater on top of this stone block, like so. 
Now for a little bit of extra detail, on the these two stone blocks you can go ahead and do a tail flash. What this usually is, is the squadron that this aircraft belongs to typically has their own type of tail flash. For us, we just went ahead and used some acacia wood uh, signs here to kind of give a reddish orange um, type tail flash here, which is basically just a stripe that goes along the tail of the aircraft. Um, you can use basically any of the signs that you have at your disposal. Uh, unfortunately, you don't have too much. You have purple, warped, uh, or blue. Uh, this acacia, I mean, you don't really have too much to work with there. I mean, you can also replace the uh, full blocks up here with concrete and then do a glass paint on the back there for that color. Um, there's a few things you can do, but this is kind of more accurate to the size of the tail flash and how that would actually be. Um, then at this point, we're going to then place down two chains on this uh, stone block and then one on this andesite wall there, so like that on the back. And we also want to go ahead and grab an end rod, and we're going to place down an end rod, which will be coming off of this stone block here. And then once we have that done, we can go ahead and also put the uh, base identifier. And what this is, is usually a two-lettered um, kind of code that stands for what the base this aircraft belongs to. Or, uh, for example, Air National Guard's a little bit different, and reserves are also a little bit different. So they kind of have their own... Um, I guess designations for their home base and all that stuff depending on which uh, which kind of uh, you know part of the Air Force they're in I guess uh, kind of hard to explain but for me I just did some random letters I did SA I'm not gonna go and go into depth of how to uh, actually um, you know make these letter banners because basically you can do any of the 26 letters in the alphabet you can do whatever you guys want uh, you can look up some real ones uh, maybe you have a base nearby you that has a, has a uh, National Guard unit of these that you want to replicate either way there are a lot of different uh, tail um, basically unit identifiers and uh, they're going to vary quite a bit across F-16s and across the Air Force and the different subdivisions and stuff like that they belong to. So uh, that right there is pretty much the tail flash and hopefully it kind of gave you some ideas and or I should say, say the tail flash but that's basically layer 7 for 10. Um, hopefully that gives you some ideas on how to go ahead and make your own tails and uh, kind of spruce it up a little bit and make your own kind of unique squadrons with the F-16. Uh, but that right there is going to conclude the in-flight version for the F-16C, Fighting Falcon. And at this point, we're going to be going ahead and now moving into uh, the bottom portion, uh, or basically the landing gear, for those of you that do want to have this aircraft landed as well. So with that, let's go ahead and dive into the landing gear. All right, guys, so moving into the landing gear. The first thing we're going to cover when it comes to the landing gear for this aircraft is we're going to cover the first wheel. We're going to go ahead and drop down to this section right here, and we want to go ahead and break these two iron trap doors on the bottom. We're going to go ahead and place down a stone brick upside down stair in this section, and then going down directly at an angle from the stone brick stair, we're going to place down a block of coal, like so. We're going to go ahead and place down a lever on top of the block of coal, and the lever is going to be facing backwards to connect up that stone brick stair. On both sides of this block of um, coal, we're going to go ahead and place down this banner design, um, so like that. And this banner design is super simple, it's basically a gray banner. Uh, light gray banner, you can use white banners, you can use dark gray, whatever color you really want to make the rims of this, uh, basically the, the landing gear. For me, I went with light gray. Um, it seems like in some pictures it, that's the closest color it is to it. It could also be in white. I wouldn't uh, put that past it either for them being white as that's kind of typical for aircraft. Uh, in the military to have white rims uh, but basically what we have here is basically just a light gray banner a black border around and the black horizontal line for the center I'm not going to go and build that exactly in the loom because I think it's pretty self-explanatory but that right there is basically all you need to do to make that banner and that will go on both sides of this block of coal that right there is it for the front landing gear let's move to the rear as you probably guessed the landing gear on the back is also very simple to do we're going to be going ahead and going down to this section right here we're going to go ahead and count back to our third stair so one two three in this section here we're going to uh, break this third stair as well as this uh, fourth stair and then this stone top side like so. We're going to place down a birchwood fence post here, iron trap door, and an air birchwood fence post in this section like that. After that's done, we're going to then place down three stone upside down stairs coming off of it like this to the side here. And we then want to go ahead and go to our stone stair here and we're going to drop down a fence post from it. We then want to go ahead and go down from the fence post over an angle, place down a block of coal, and then a lever like this. We're also going to go and place down a light gray banner, or the same banner design we used in the front on the side there of that block. After that's all done, we're going to go then place down a skeleton skull, which will be coming off the side of this block like this, to the side um, like that. And you're going to basically take this wheel design and copy it over to the air side. Another quick thing is if you are on Java, we can go ahead and fix this uh, weirdness with the glass panes and connecting up to the stairs. It's not the greatest looking design, and we can go ahead and very simply um, use our debug stick here by left clicking on this glass pane until we get selected um, basically east 
um, is what we want. Selected east, and it should be true. We're going to go ahead and set this to false. Um, obviously, depending on the direction of this aircraft and the orientation, that might be a little bit different. But just go ahead and kind of mess with it, see which uh, way it faces, and just go ahead and basically adjust it so that it does not connect up to the back of those stairs. And again, looks a little bit nicer there overall. Uh, but anyways, that right there is it for the landing gear. You're going to take the same design, copy it over the air side, and you'll have the landing gear done for both sides for the F-16C Fighting Falcon. Hopefully you guys do enjoy this tutorial and are able to put it to good use. If you do end up using this build, I do ask you guys to give me proper credit for it. This may be from some of the build to my channel or this video if this does bring you social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for it, you're free to use the favorite project you guys are working on. Overall, enjoy the build, have fun with it, and all that fun stuff. With that though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary 204, and I'll see you guys next time.